Hi, I'm Paul from bostonchefs.com and today I'm going to show you how to make beer at home. Um, it's The lore has it that the first beer was made in like Egypt or Samaria and the story is that someone just left bread out in a bowl out, out in, outside and it rained. And they forgot about it for a few days, came back and there's a soggy bread with all this water around it that smelled sort of odd but interesting. Uh, they drank it and were surprised that they started feeling a little odd and interesting themselves. Um, so I figure if you can accidentally make beer like that, it shouldn't be too hard to do it in your own home. Um, thankfully, uh, science has come a long way, uh, and we now know actually what goes into making beer and can do it with some great accuracy. Uh, the basic ingredients of beer are easy to procure these days for anyone. Uh, it's just water, malted barley, hops, and yeast. The malted barley uh, looks like this. Got a few different flavors, if you will, here. Um, and this is where the sugar comes from that gives uh, the food to the yeast to create the alcohol and the carbon dioxide. Um, the majority of malted barley in a beer is sort of a light color. And then you use uh, progressively darker uh, and sweeter or roastier grains to give uh, the beer a different malty flavors. Um, since we get the sugar and the sweetness and the malty or breadiness from the malted barley, uh, we have to address where the, the floral components and the citrus components and all the bitterness comes from, uh, and that will be hops. Uh, they grow on a vine and look like this when they're growing. Uh, they can be used in beer as so, or in a pelletized format, which you'd probably find it if you went to a homebrew store uh, to pick it up. And then you add some uh, yeast, which comes in packets like this, or tubes readily available at your uh, local homebrew store. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of varieties. You can make anything from an IPA to a Belgian style beer or an English style beer. And the beer we'll be making today, we're actually going to be making an IPA. An IPA is a great beer for your first brew. Uh, the reason being, it's forgiving. It has a lot of hops. Hops can really hide uh, some of the, the mistakes you might make on the way, along the way. Who knows, you might not make any mistakes. But if you get a little wild yeast in there and the flavor's just a little off, it's going to be uh, so floral and bitter, no one's going to really notice. So it's a good way to start off. Uh, though I said that, uh, and it's true, most of the, or all the sugars in beer come from the malted barley, uh, there's an easier way to get the majority of your sugars in the batch that we're going to do today, and that's using something called malt extract. It comes in a liquid form and looks like this, or in a powdered form like this. Uh, what the malt extract is, is basically just a concentrated version uh, of, of the wort, the unfermented beer. So someone else has taken the sugars out of uh, the barley malt for you and then boiled it down and possibly dried it. And then all you have to do is reconstitute it, maybe add some specialty grains, maybe something darker. We won't be using any dark grains today because IPAs are sort of late. But we'll be using a caramel gra uh, grain called uh, Caramel 40 Degree Level Bond, which is its rating of color and, and sweetness. Uh, combine it all together, boil, cool, Add the yeast, wait a couple weeks, you got beer. So the first time you brew, you're going to have to lay out a little extra cash, maybe $70, and pick up some equipment. But this equipment can be used every time you brew. It lasts quite a long time. Uh, first, you're going to need a couple buckets. One to put your unfermented beer in uh, so that it can ferment, and then one to put the uh, beer in to bottle. The one with the bottling, uh, the one you use for bottling, has a spigot at the bottom so you can pour the beer out of it easily into bottles. That said, you'll need some bottles. You also need some caps to close off the bottles and a capper to actually physically attach the caps to the bottles. Um, you get the beer from one bucket to the other using a little sip siphoning apparatus right here. Probably most importantly, you need cleaning solution. Um, your cleaning solution, you put into hot water in either of these buckets and let it sit there for a couple of hours. It takes all the detritus that's stuck on from previous batches off. You rinse it out. Your buckets are clean. However, your buckets have to be a little more than clean in order to put beer in them or else you'll potentially get some boil, uh, beer spoiling bacteria or wild yeast in there. That's why you use sanitizer. Sanitizer also dissolves very quickly in water. You just fill it up, let the sanitizing solution sit in either bucket. You put your, um, your siphoning equipment in there. You put your bottles in the uh, Sanitation, uh, sanitation solution, and that way it'll kill anything that is living there. Only takes about 10 minutes. It's a no rinse sanitizer, that means you just empty it out and then you can put your beer right in contact with it. It won't harm you at all. Um, I guess I left out one step before you get anything in these buckets, you're going to need to boil the beer. Uh, 
you boil a beer, uh, you'll need at least a uh, four or five gallon, uh, preferably stainless steel, if not aluminum is fine, kettle that'll fit on your stove that you can add. Uh, you'll be boiling about two and a half to three gallons of water, but you need the extra space so it doesn't boil over. All right, so we've taken two and a half gallons of water straight from the tap. So long as your water doesn't smell or taste like chlorine, it's perfectly fine to use for brewing. Heat it up to 170 degrees. Thermometer is very useful to have on hand to figure that one out. Then we're going to take our steeping grains. We'll be using a caramel gra uh, grain called uh, Caramel 40 Degree Level Bond. Once the grains are in there, we're just going to tie off the top of this bag so they don't escape. And we're going to put the uh, sack of grains into the water. Take our big spoon and just move this around enough to get all the grains in that bag nice and wet because what we're doing here is we're going to ex extract all the sugars that are sitting inside of this malted barley uh, into the water. And just like if you're, you know, trying to dissolve regular sugar into cold water, it's a little rough to do that. But if you're trying to dissolve regular sugar into tea, it dissolves pretty quickly because of how hot it is. So the heat of this water is going to help extract the sugars. So once this uh, sack of grain is sufficiently wet, we are just going to put it in the uh, bat and the, keep it in the pot, let it hang out a little bit, cover it, and set a timer for half an hour. All right, so the grains uh, have been steeping for half an hour, and so it's time to take them out. Uh, as you can see, they retain a decent amount of water, so you want to keep them uh, dangling over the pot uh, to get all that good sugar water out because we want it in our final beer. Um, now that we've removed the grains, it's okay to bring the entire uh, kettle of wort up above the 170 mark, so we're going to bring it actually right up to a boil. Um, what's going to happen when it reaches a boil is it's going to be time to add the malt extract syrup, so this stuff right here. But what we're going to do is stop the boil before we add the extract syrup. So we bring it up to a boil, so we got it at that temperature, then we turn off the heat. The malt extract syrup is actually just a concentrated version of what we made here, which is uh, sugar water where the sugar came from grains. Add our, add our malt extract syrup, bring it back up to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, we're going to add our first addition of hops. Hops are what provides the bittering on the floral components uh, to beer. Because we're making an IPA today, there's going to be a lot of hops. So our first addition of hops is going to go in right when we start the boil. Then there'll be a second addition about 40 minutes into the boil. And then 60 minutes into the boil, which is the complete length of the boil, we're going to add our last uh, couple ounces of hops. Uh, you add the hops at different periods of the boil because they do different things to the flavor of the beer based on when you add them. The hops you add first, so the ones we'll add right when it comes to boil, are going to create the majority of the bittering. The ones that we'll add about halfway through are going to be sort of the flavor. They're just going to make it taste uh, floral and citrusy. The ones we add right at the end are going to be all about the aroma. So when you crack open that beer, boom, you get hit with the flavor or the aroma of hops. All right, we boiled our wort. We took it from boiling to about 70 degrees by putting it in the sink, running water around it. Now we're ready to add it to some additional water because if you remember, we only boiled two and a half gallons of the wort. We're making five gallons of beer. So what I'm going to do is take the boiled wort, add it to some water, then I take a spoon, aerate it, which adds air to the wort because air is actually very necessary for the yeast to start fermenting this beer. Yeast has two uh, stage, stages of respiration, aerobic and anaerobic. During aerobic respiration, that's using oxygen, yeast replicates, so it makes more yeast. So we want our yeast to multiply as much as possible right at the beginning of fermentation. Because once it's done multiplying, then it's going to use those sugars and make alcohol. That's why we want to very vigorously stir this, probably for 10 to 15 minutes if you can stand it, just to get as much oxygen in here as possible. Now it's time for the last portion, which is just adding the yeast. Uh, the yeast I'm using comes in one of these little tubes. Uh, you want to shake it up just a little bit to uh, make sure that it, is, it gets distributed within uh, the substance that's there. Otherwise, it'll just clump at the bottom and you won't be able to get it out. So shake it up just a little bit. I sanitize the top of this in our sanitizer just to be super careful. Open it up right over your beer. And then pour it in. 
Once that's done, it's time to close this guy up, put it in an airlock, and have a little patience because it's going to take about 10 to 14 days to ferment. Airlock looks like this. You put it in the top hole of your fermenter. And what this is going to allow to happen is for carbon dioxide, which is one of the byproducts of yeast fermentation, to escape by bubbling out. But it's not going to let anything get in. Again, we just want to make sure this is safe and sanitary for those yeast to reproduce and ferment without any competition from wild yeast or bacteria. So after the beer fermented for two weeks, it's ready to be transferred into a bottling bucket and bottled uh, so that we can drink it. This morning, I sanitized my bottling bucket and my siphoning equipment so that the beer is moving into a clean and sanitary environment. Um, it's a pretty easy process using um, uh, acid-based sanitizer that'll just kill all the bugs in there. It's food grade sanitizer, so actually once the beer hits it, it's inactive, so it's completely safe and uh, you won't be hurting yourself or your friends. Last night, I moved the bucket that contains the beer uh, up onto this chair to give it, you know, 24 hours to sort of settle out. The hops that we put in during the boil were all in suspension during the fermentation. There's also a lot of solids from the malt that were floating around. So now that the fermentation is over, if you just leave it in one place for, you know, 12 to 24 hours, everything will settle out to the bottom. And then when you siphon it, you'll just get clear beer now into the bottling bucket. Um, the reason that we're going to move it from the fermenter to the bottling bucket before we bottle the beer is because, well, there's two reasons. One, we need to add priming sugar, and that's sugar that the yeast is going to use to convert to carbon dioxide and actually carbonate your beer. Two, as I mentioned, there's a lot of gunk at the bottom of this uh, fermenter, so if we were to bottle straight from here, you'd have a really hazy and actually sort of disgusting beer. I've already pre-boiled uh, priming sugar in about a cup of water. Uh, this allows both the priming sugar to dissolve into the water and it sanitizes the water and makes sure nothing's living in there. So siphon from the fermenter into the bottling bucket, add the priming sugar. Once the priming sugar is in the solution, we're going to put it in some bottles and in a couple more weeks it'll be ready to drink. All right, so we've moved the beer from the fermenter where it sat for two weeks into the bottling bucket. We add the priming sugar, that's all nice and mixed up. Now we've let the bucket, uh, the bottling bucket sit up here for about 20 minutes, so any small hot particles that might have transferred over into the bottling bucket have uh, sunk to the bottom again, so all the beer that we're pulling off into the bottle is gonna be completely clear uh, and, and look good when it uh, hits the hits a glass. Um, in order to move it from the bottling bucket into bottles, we've got a little bottling tube here. We're gonna set it up to the spigot of the bottling bucket, which is in the closed position. Then we've got our bottling wand attached to the end of this tube. And most importantly, we've got our bottle, which, like the tube, uh, has been sitting in sanitizer and is perfectly uh, safe to put beer into. Uh, since this was sitting in sanitizer, there is going to be uh, some sanitizer in the line. You're going to want to just press the bottling wand down to get that sanitizer out. Notice I have yet to open the spigot to the bottling bucket. Now that I've cleared out all the sanitizer, I'm going to open the spigot to the bottling bucket. Beer is going to slowly start trickling in to uh, the tube. As that happens, we're going to place the tube, uh, the bottling wand rather, into the bottle and press down. And it's going to fill the bottle ever so slowly. Once uh, the beer actually starts overflowing just a little bit, that's where we're going to remove the wand from the bottle. The reason we wait for the beer to overflow is so that any oxygen that is in the bottle gets forced out. You don't want to leave any oxygen whatsoever in the bottle or as little as you can because oxygen will stale the beer. Now that we have our bottle full with uh, beer, we're going to move it over here and grab a cap. They buy the caps, they're flattened out. Look. They're called crown caps, look much like a regular crown cap that you take off a bottle, just a little flatter. Uh, that's been sitting in sanitizer. We put it on top of the bottle and then take out our uh, actual capping mechanism. Um, just place it on top of the bottle. It clamps around the neck. You push down. It's not hard at all. And you've got a bottled beer. Making a five gallon batch of beer, you're going to end up having to bottle 48 individual bottles. Uh, the first time you brew a beer, I do recommend bottling because it can be a fun process, but doing 48 bottles can get a little tedious. You got some other options. You can buy liter bottles like this uh, that come with their own caps. They're a little easier uh, to bottle because you basically have to do a third as many. Saves you some time.
So once the beer uh, is in whatever receptacle you choose to bottle it in, you need to just let it wait in order to carbonate because we've got sugar in the beer. Even though you can't see it, there still is yeast in suspension. The yeast is going to eat that sugar and carbonate the beer. It's going to take about two weeks and you want to keep it around 70, 75 degrees, uh, sort of warm so that the yeast will just cut through that um, sugar and get the carbon dioxide into the beer. Then after the two weeks is over, crack it open and it's ready to drink. After the beer is bottled, just got to have a couple weeks more patience. Let that yeast eat the priming sugar. That's where the carbonation comes from. But once those two weeks are over, kept your beer at 70, 75 degrees, a magical thing will happen. You'll be able to open, hope, you'll be able to open a beer that you brewed that is fully carbonated. Brewing is a time intensive hobby, but trust me, it's worth it. Happy brewing.